I just want to make sure he's clear, y'all, before we get started. A lot going on tonight, so we're going to get this out the way early. Hello, world. I'm just here to make you think. This CEO, Philly Trenches Hockey Ball, coming at you live and direct with Philly Trenches. Talk at the dark episode 348. We're coming on early tonight because you got the Phillies playing. They're going to be coming on soon. And I'm in my home celebrating um, the life of a family member that passed away. We over here, you know, with the music and food, the barbecue and all that. You know what I mean? So I'm going to get this in so I can finish participating with the party and everything because, as you know, it was in my house and I ain't got to go nowhere but up the steps. But I took a couple of days off, you know what I mean, do some brainstorming and all that. But we're going to talk about, tonight we're going to talk about North Phillies basketball and how... Philly period, how Philly used to be knee deep into sports before the drug game came along. You're going to hear about the star athletes like Pooh Richardson, who ran ball in the same gym as me of Frankfurt, of the Frankfurt Boys and Girls Club, and how all these individual basketball icons from back in the day did they thing, and how the streets drugs took them off the course of being successful in the basketball world. Now, as you see, this is the thumbnail. Pooh Richardson and said from Richard Island, he used to be a rapper. I mean, an alleged ex-drug kingpin down Richard Island. Said used to rap. As you know, said played basketball too. And coming up in North Philly, playing in um, the basketball tournaments, the basketball leagues, the Boys and Girls Club, Connie Max, um, R.W. Brown. All these guys came up together. There's another famous guy who could have went pro. But the streets, and this is an individual who me and my twin brother look up to. He was like our mentor. You know, this right at the sink, we got locked up up Erie Avenue with Zach and them. We used to come down, laughing Arts projects back in the day to be with Shawnee Mack and his older brother, Doc. Doc had a mean basketball game. See, this Doc right here with the hoodie on and Pooh Richardson, they played ball together. When I tell you they played ball together, man, when I went to my first football or my first basketball banquet and I went to the championship and I showed y'all, I'm going to show y'all real fast. Because I'm gonna come out of um come out of that to show y'all. Because I'm gonna go back into that, but I want to show y'all a picture. Because I'm gonna get back to his pictures, but I'm gonna show you show y'all a picture that about is a picture that is is of me. Some of y'all seen it. Some of y'all may have not seen it. Because I'm gonna go back to there in a minute. Far as um. Back to the pictures with Doc and all of them, all that. Mama, I'm gonna call you back. I do my live. All right. Now, I'm about to show you all these pictures so y'all can see. Because a lot of people, they remember, but I'm bringing y'all back down memory lane for a reason. Because these pictures I'm about to show y'all is my banquet picture. For the first time that I went at a basketball banquet, and I ran into these individuals that was older than me. I watched them play basketball. Y'all see me right there with my trophy, young boy. And this up Frankfurt. This at the banquet that Pooh Richardson and all them was at. As you see, I was a young boy, 10 years old. As you can tell, I had a swatch watcher. You see that on my wrist, a swatch watch. Right now, they cost like $2,000, but back then, I'm in the streets. I'm wild. 
I'm robbing people. I got the squash watch on, I'm still playing ball. See, this is a secret that me and my twin brother had, my brother Daryl had. We was in the streets, but we also had time for sports. But in the back of my mind, I knew that the streets was pulling me more like it pulled anybody else to the streets. Now, the reason why I showed y'all this picture is to let y'all know that back in 1983, 1984, I was playing basketball when Philly basketball was relevant. You feel what I'm saying? So I got I had to show y'all that and bring y'all back to that because I'm sitting there thinking like, dang, man, we really, you know what I'm saying, really was like young boys running ball, time time from Ram Squad. I'm talking about everybody that was just like their last young boys. I'm about to show y'all the rest of these pictures too right now. Pooh Richardson, um, Tidy and um, Timothy Thompson. You about to see all these pictures. Just trying to get the pictures. Oh, here they go. I'm on somebody else. I'm on my, my man Doc Page because Doc got all the pictures. This all them right here in the playground. But this Richard Allen too, though, because I know that's Caddy right there, I think. But I'm about to just show y'all the pictures of the ball players. This them again. Now look, <clears throat> this down Tiffin Thompson. All the dudes that played ball, Todd and them, Tiffin Thompson that played in R.W. Brown. These are the guys that played with Pooh Richardson. These are the guys that played with um Hank Gathers, right? These all the dudes. These all them right here. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of them still play ball with each other. Yeah, you know I mean, this is a Richard Allen picture. This is Richard Allen. Yeah, you know I'm saying, Vaughn, Butchie. I'm just showing you all these pictures because when I get into the story, that's Tupi that was in state property. He had braids. He got killed in the playground. He played the drug kingpin. That's Shawnee Mac in the middle. You know, I think it's the Ethan Diamond reunion that's going on. But this Tom Tom and Ronnie from Ram Squad. Yeah, I mean, this is when I'm just showing you all these pictures because when I get into this story, all of them going to pop up because all of them had a basketball game. But people don't know Ram Squad. All of them could play real basketball. They could have went to college and played overseas and did anything with their talent. This is one of my thumbnails that y'all seen before of Richard Allen and all that. You know, let's get into this. Now, this is another picture said Tupi and Tom Tom. You know what I mean? May Tom Tom and Tupi rest in peace. Another picture Doc with the red kangle on. Mel, Marv, I mean, Richard Allen. Now, the reason why I'm showing y'all this, because we about to get into it. See, the go Doc and Tom Tom right there. Now, Tom Tom could play ball, too. Now, let's get into this. Now, back in the day, this Tupi, again, is mural. And he had his braids. Now, back in the 80s and back in the early 80s, right, these basketball games used to be so heated, right, that they rather play each other in basketball than fight each other. In this early 80s when hip-hop was just getting off the ground, this is when Roxanne Shante, UTFO and all of them was in the mix. You feel me? So you had Crosstown. You know, and cross town could be either side. I live cross town, I live on the other side, which is 23rd and Blumber, 23rd, 22nd, and Cease to be more. The King Cell. You know what I mean? Um, 25th and Diamond Projects, Moreland. It was called Moreland's Recreation Center, but now it's called Hank Gatherson's. I was going there when it was called Moreland's, right? Now, as time is going on, you got Bruce Lee, even though he passed away, you got people looking up to Bruce Lee martial arts. You got people looking up to Muhammad Ali, which is boxing. 
Then you got people looking up to Dr. J, which is basketball, right? So, and then you got Resi Jackson baseball. So you got all these different things that our minds is privy to that we are just like accustomed to that we gravitate to, right? Drugs ain't come to the surface yet. Heron has died down. You know, the black mafia has just been killed, arrested, or whatever you want to call that. It was the end of that. You know, what's going on? Um, now was born. What do you say? This brother's storytelling is different. Thanks a lot, brother. <clears throat> Good looking. Hey, now look. Now, you got to understand something. I'm really from the streets. I'm not one of these dudes that that just want to be on here for likes and money, any shit like that. No, I'm on here to tell Philly's underground story is truth. So our moment in history won't get lost, won't get shuffled under somebody's porch or something. This is why I'm glad I got this platform. So a hundred years from now, people can say, damn, that's what happened in Philly. That's what they was doing back then. Yes, then we had athletes. We had athletes that played football, basketball, baseball, karate. There was a lot of karate schools back in the day, a lot of boxing schools. It was a lot of all that. And people was participating. They was breaking their neck to go to these places without even having car fare, without even having no food in their stomach. It's just that they had the love for being in shape. And that's what a lot of y'all don't understand. See, right now in the world, we're dealing with obesity. You know, back then, we didn't really eat that much. We weren't wasn't, we wasn't hungry for food and all that. We was hungry for knowledge of the arts, like far as martial arts, boxing, basketball, football. We wanted to be that. Because we had people to look up to. We had role models that was in sports. And back then, you knew everybody named that was in sports. You understand what I'm saying? It wasn't about money. It was about just accomplishing something. I mean, being somebody. Now it's just about money and greed, power, and position that you would never see the full talent of the realness of individual no more. Because we are so trapped and pulled from all different directions. You understand what I'm saying? But back then, when you had brothers like Pooh Richardson that continue to play basketball, Blair Thomas, who continue to play football, the individuals around them that people forget about, the people that made these individuals better by practicing with them, by playing against them, playing with them, these names get uh, swept under the rug. So a lot of these guys, they go to work or they might sell drugs. You never know what they might do to survive. But one thing Mr. Charlie and them know, and I want y'all to understand this, Mr. Charlie mastered the mind. He mastered the human being. He know that if a human being has no money, have no means to take care of his family or self, he's going to go out there and he's going to do for self. He's going to make it happen. Rather, he's got to still rob or anything because that's human nature. The system know if you see a homeless person that has nothing, that homeless person is going to go in the store and steal something to eat. They know this. They know a lot of things. They know the fact that they take our dreams from us, fire our mothers, lock up our fathers, you know what I mean? Force our family into poverty, welfare, and to force our hands into doing something that we really don't want to do, and that's sell drugs. Don't nobody wake up. So nobody go to school saying I'm gonna be a drug dealer when I get older. Now, nowadays they might say they want to be a rapper because what they are accustomed to, what they are used to seeing. When we was younger, I went to like six or seven different public schools, and I seen and I heard what people wanted to be, and it wasn't in the streets. In all the institutions I've been in, whether it was juvenile, county, or state prison. All these institutions I found myself in, I found myself around individuals who was just trying to survive. They didn't brag about robbing this bank, robbing this check cash and police, killing this person, killing that person, selling this, selling that, bragging about what they had. See, this is why Philly is probably the last city 
that comes out and tell you about its city because we are not accustomed to bragging about the things we have. This is was this was brought about us by ways of the internet. You know, we practice silence, just get money and survive. Because you gotta understand something, we came from the era of the Black Panther, the Nation of Islam. I mean, we all need deep, I'm from that era. You know I mean, we need deep in that. So we practice to remain silent because we know what Mr. Charlie can do. However, me finding out that there's a statute of limitation on which you can and cannot talk about with murder, there's no statute of limitation on. So they come lock you up anytime. You can be 99 years old and come get you for a homicide you did 200 years ago. And like, you know what I mean? I'm just, just saying it like that. 100 years ago, 200 years ago, they can still come lock you up. Now me talking about the stuff I'm talking about, I'm talking about stuff that happened 35 years ago, 40 years ago, 30 years ago, probably 15 years ago, but it's a statute of limitation. And I'm mainly talking about myself. Now, I might mention other people just to give them their roses and their props, not to make them look bad. So when y'all see me making videos, don't think, oh, he's making that video because he's trying to get likes. No, I'm making the videos so I can get people their flowers, make people aware, because a lot of people don't, just don't know what happened 20 years ago, what happened 30 years ago, what happened 40 years ago, because they wasn't there. Being that I was there, being as though I was around, then I'm privy to what was going on. I can tell you, because a lot of people forgot, don't remember, I mean, uh, wasn't around, was around, but wasn't there. Yeah, you know I mean, a lot of people never been in prison before. So a lot of people know how that prison life is, how it feels to put a gun in your hand, how it feels to sell drugs, how it feels to be in a shootout, how it feels to be in a meeting where as though you about to go to war against other inmates in jail, about to go to war against other individuals on the streets. Like a lot of people don't know what that feels like. People want to know, if, do you feel nervous when you do that? You know I mean, no. Just like when you go to work and you got a regular nine to five job, that's just how I feel, regular. It's just that once you get accustomed to doing something, you get used to it. Like people in jail, they used to being in jail. They might not want to be in jail, but trust me, they making a way to survive in jail. There's more people making money in jail than there's people that's making money on the streets. Yeah, believe that. I'm talking about some underground shit, some secret squirrel type shit, if you know what I mean. For those who know, know. And you ain't never had to be in jail to be a part of that hustle that goes on in jail. And for those who know, know. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about. The females will go up there to bring, to drop the package off the guard that they pay to bring it in. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Shout out to all y'all hustlers out there. Shout out to everybody in the county. Shout out to Holmesburg, if they still open with the intake. Shout out to D.C. County Prison. Shout out to um, the House of Correction County Prison. Shout out to Pick. Shout out to Lauren Hall. Shout out to the jail that's on 17th and Sesley off of Lehigh. Shout out to CFCF. Shout out to Muncie. Shout out to the Phoenix that took greatest for a spot. Shout out to Chester Jail, too. Shout out to Huntington. Shout out to all the penitentiaries in Pennsylvania. Shout out to all you DC cats out there, too, that's locked up, that's in DC, that's in Baltimore, that's in Maryland. Because a lot of y'all knew how to play ball back in the day and New York. See, Detroit, Coatesville, from Detroit to Coatesville, PA, you got so much talent. You had so many youngins that knew how to play ball without even learning how to play ball, just watching people play ball. You don't see somebody drawing a piece of paper. They can draw real good. They can be in your kindergarten class, your first grade class, your third grade class, your seventh grade class. And you say, damn, how does this person get to draw so good? That's just how easy it is in sports in the ghetto. Somebody could just pick a basketball up and could just be a hell of a dribbler, right? Somebody can get the football and be a hell of a scorer, a hell of a passer, a hell of a catcher. Like, look at me. I'm going to show you all something, right? Now, you see this basketball, right? Boom. I'm going to show you all something. Something that my cousin taught me. But as you see, I can spin this thing. You know why I can spin it? 
because I can spin it on an ink pen too. You know why? Because it's all about balance. Someone to knock them over, but I can balance it on this, this, this. See this right here? I'm gonna talk to y'all with these at the same time. See, a lot of people ain't got all these skills, but I, not knowing them Harlem go try the shit, but I can spin it also. I can spin it with a penny all on my knuckles. You know, I can let it go. Anyway, we conquered every sport that they threw at us, right? And that was our way to get out of poverty, right? So you gotta understand something. You had basketball players that was better than Pooh Richardson. You had football players that was better than Blair Thomas, right? Now, Blair Thomas went to Franklin High School, then he went to Penn State, then he played for the Dallas Cowboys, right? Hands down, I was younger than Blair Thomas, but I was a better athlete than him, just younger, because I didn't have a whole football team around me when I did all my unbelievable things. Only It was only 13 of us. That's why I said I was better, and I never came out the game, and I barely got dirty. And I'm not trying to compare me to him. I'm just saying, you got athletes, different ages and everything. However, if you got a thousand good athletes, they only going to pick one of us. Probably from every city. And the rest, they just going to lock up, get them hooked on drugs, kill each other, go to prison, sell drugs, you know. And there was one bas basketball player that got us out of that situation. But a lot of y'all didn't see it because y'all chose to be with the media and Michael Jordan. That was Kwame Brown. Kwame Brown was 17 years old. And they gave him $30 million to be in the NBA. 17. That's how old I was when I got juvenile life. 17. So they try to say he was a bust. The reason why <clears throat> Michael Jordan and the rest of the NBA lashed out at him and tried to make him look like he was less of a person than he was because Michael Jordan didn't want nobody to take his name title. It's like he didn't want Kobe Bryant or LeBron James. That's why he kept moving LeBron James and Kobe and them around because you got to understand something. When they put all them good players in Detroit, that would just slow Kobe Bryant down. That's when... Um, Hamilton and them got them back-to-back -back championships in Detroit because they wanted to slot, stop Kobe from getting past Michael Jordan. Michael, they wanted him to stop. They wanted him to pass Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan had a hand in that. He had a hand in switching these players around. Y'all don't know that. All them good players, Vince Carter, look how all them players got hindered. Um, Stackhouse, all these players, um, even Allen Iverson, they was, Ben was supposed to pass Michael Jordan, the stats and all that. But the shit is tricky. They slow us down. There's a million Michael Jordans, a billion Michael Jordans in the ghetto. But they throw the monkey wrench at us so we can go to jail. Kwame Brown, right? Michael Jordan got a, a specific coach to, 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 to teach Kwame Brown, but to really dog him, to really make him look bad. Because if he's 17 years old and he's coming out of a poor situation, and now his mom living on a golf course, like he say, right? 60 acre golf course, right? 63 acres, right? Now, if his mom living on this golf course and he's 17 years old, you know what that was gonna be? He was gonna be the closest child to show everybody that they can do the same thing at age 15, 16, 17, in any sport. So they closed that door fast and threw him under the bus so nobody else wouldn't be that young to get their family out the ghetto. That was the train line right there. Yup. Kwame Brown train line to, to rich and famous, but they cut it short because they didn't want that to be the America story. All these blacks coming out of poverty because of sports that the white man invented. Let that sink in. You know? And look who they paid. The boy, what's his name? The boy name that always grind him up. The sports analysis dude, Stephen Smith, Stephen A. Smith, him. He was paid. He's paid. 
to make our people look like shit in sports. You know, he's a nerd, but he was the type of nerd that was a jealous type individual that he couldn't make in his sports. You got them type of people around that can't make it in something, so they just try to destroy anybody else's name who got a name, you know? Even in the streets, you got people like that because they couldn't make it selling drugs because they went to jail, came on, and they fucked up. Now somebody else got the ball in their hand, and they doing real good in the drug game. You can have dudes come home that's going to try to kidnap them, rob them, or shit on their name. That's what dudes do, man. And that's what we got to stop. We got to stop disrespecting each other. Stop hating on the next man and the next woman. And this and this all stems from the woman. The woman, the mother, she sits around and talk real bad about her friends, her girlfriends, whoever. And while they're on the phone talking bad about somebody else, the kids, they kids, they see it, they hear it, and they mimic it. So when they get mad, they know how to get mad, who to talk about, how to talk about. And they, and they go to school and they say that shit to another student. And then next thing you know, the whole school saying it. Yeah. And then you wonder why, you know, we so discombobulated. We, we see something and we hate on it. We so judgmental. We so quick to say, oh, I don't like his content. I don't like his video. I don't like his rap song. Then he say, you know what? Congratulations. You got to really act like a grandparent would act towards a grandchild that's a real young child that's in school, in a school play, doing the best they can. And the grandparents saying, that's still my grandbaby. That's how you got to be with your own people. That's my people's, though. That's my people's. Fuck that. That's like you do when you watch the Olympics. You, you, you root for your country. Like if you're from the United States, you root for the United States, right? If you don't see the United States and you see like probably Jamaica or something like that, you root for your own complexion, your own color. You know what I mean? So we got to, you know what I mean, get out of that, but transfer that to our own. Like if you see somebody and you know that whatever they doing, as far as the internet, as far as rap music, as far as R&B music, as far as doing anything other than being in the streets, you supposed to applaud them. You supposed to support them because that same person that is out there trying, they can easily be out there selling drugs, robbing somebody, breaking the law. But instead, they chose to do something different with their time. You know what I mean? They're intelligent enough to do something different. I hope y'all look at the video that I made too, y'all. There's a video that I made that I told y'all I was going to make. I was going to go down to prison. And make it about Darnell Jackson for major change. Now he's locked up, like I told y'all. They're trying to see, paint a picture like he's this big time drug lord, and how he tried to hire somebody, allegedly hire somebody as a contract to take somebody's life, you know. But what y'all going to see if y'all come to the trial, y'all going to see that this CI was paid ten thousand dollars. To set Darnell Jackson up. And y'all gonna see that the CI did all the talking, reached out to him, start asking him about drugs. Yo, we'll get a 62 at. So just start, just start talking street shit. You know what I mean? Like he was just trying to entice him and trap him to engage in the conversation. And you, and you gotta figure out how did they meet? Because Major Change the World, which is on Instagram, which y'all can watch the rest of the video at, Major Change the World on Instagram, right? He was on the internet. The CI guy, the informant, reached out to him through the internet because they he seen him arguing with another individual that he knew. It was arguing, beefing on the internet. So the CI guy intervened and said, yo, man, get with me. I can help you out and take care of that problem and all that. Like, he just like, they actually paid this guy to do that. You know? And it's the video right here. I want to show you all parts of the video. You know what I mean? Because this video is right here. I got it on my page. But if y'all want to watch the full video, if y'all want to watch the full video, y'all go on Instagram and look up Major Change the World. Major Change the World. Look at the video. We got Major Change on the phone. Major Change. What's going on, Major Change? Major Change. 
Federal jail on Seventh Arch. I went down there twice. Now this, I'm talking about his case. I'm, I'm interviewing him, right? Now when I first went down there, I went out there and I, I was outside the car, and you know, it's people was interview like filming me while I was talking, you know. But then all the officers start coming out and walking around the building and all that, and you know. I got to tell you how I ride. So I like, oh, we got your body. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? So, so we did it again the next day. We came down there. We came down there the next day. We just sat in the car and we did it that way. Because they was like, like they were feeling some type of way that we was across the street making a video. Now, on the same side of the street I was on is a black African museum. We got footage of that. But if y'all want to see the video, y'all got go, y'all got to go on Instagram and look up major change the world and you will see the video the full video of me and him how i interviewed him because he's going to call even though he's he's inside that prison and his people just came out to visit and we all met up right there in front of the jail and he called the phone and then you just see the cameras is on in front of the prison the federal prison while i'm talking to him because he's inside of there you know he's on i think 7th Street side. He was on Arch Street side, but now they, you know, they switch you around and they think, and you can hear people hollering and everything because people got on the side of the building, if you look up top, you can see it look like a hallway, but it looked like it's, it's like a fence. So you can see, like if they was to walk by, you can see them. Yeah, man, you'd be surprised at the jail. They had a little Kim in there. They had a Remy Mine in there. Yeah, females in that jail too. You know what I mean? And then he tell you how you get in touch with him and all that. So every day I'm going to be promoting major change. I'm going to go down there December 5th, 2022. I'm a boycott in front of there. And like on a video, he tell you, you could come down there on the eighth floor. I think it's in courtroom 8B or 8A. But you want to know, because y'all going to see the cameras and all that down there. So y'all come down there. It's free to the public. He just wants y'all to hear how they want to present his trial. And he's going to take the witness stand. Like he said, he's highly intelligent, you know what I mean? And he's going to know how to, you know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? But at least he's fighting for his freedom, man. Because the the, the feds got a 95% conviction rate. Because a lot of people take deals. And you got some people that fight and win, like Kenyatta Johnson. I think he's state representative. He's something to do with politics. He's, in, he's a politician, I think. I believe so. For South Philly. He just beat his case early this week. <clears throat> What's going on? What's going on? Salute, salute, salute. The brother storytelling is different. Yeah, my story is different, y'all, because see, when I get on here, because I'm really from the streets, man, and I know that 200 countries watch me from around the world, and I know a lot of the, the the known cities of America, watch me. Detroit, um, LA, San Francisco, uh, New York, Boston, Atlanta, Charlotte, um, Philly, like all, like even Dubai, watch me. So all the main cities, Boston, Delaware, Detroit, like um, DC, Baltimore, all like the East Coast, watch me, you know? So, that made me feel good. And I know that Chicago watched me, you know, because one thing about individuals, whether you young or damn near 50 years old like me, you know when somebody from the streets is being real with you, you know somebody being real with you, period. You know your own kind being real with you. We need content like mine so we can wake people up, period, of all ages. We can let people know how it was, how it is, and how it's going to be, you know? And like I gotta tell you, you might start off with some friends on the streets, but you might not end up with them. You know, now all the individuals I showed y'all in the pictures, like Tom, Tom, Ronnie, and them, Richard Allen, and all these people I showed you from Tiffin Thompson and all that, is because at one point in time, 
even all the way up to 7th and Huntington, and up Erie Avenue, and up Logan, and up uptown, and up Frankfurt. You had all these athletes from Blumberg, um, 29th and Jefferson that can play football, uh, Big Cheese Steak, Little Cheese Steak, you know I mean? Big Shark, Little Shark, all these boys that can really fight. Jeff Gantz, the Bucky Davises, all these, the Melody Tellers, all these boys that can fight. Antoine you know what I mean? Like the pal, like boxing, uh, Joe Frazier came from down south and then he, he studied and mastered the, the Philly way of fighting. Philly is where boxing came from. Philly, New York. Boxing came from there. Yeah, you know I mean, from being in the trenches. That's why I called this show Philly Trenches, man. Because Philly was made off the trenches, being in the trenches, going to war, fighting for, 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 for life, for freedom, for equality, just for a piece of bread, just for being able to vote. You know, we come a long way, but when we master something with the energy that we possess from the earth, you know, we master every sport, but they do everything and they possible, everything they do possible to, to hold us back. If you see any other race besides a person with melanin in their skin, you're going to see those people practicing sports, trying to stay in shape and all that. You don't see us doing that. Even when we don't even play sports no more, you'll see people that don't even play sports that's white, that jog, that work out because they want to live forever. You know, they naturally age faster than anybody. You know, we don't have to do all that extra shit. And the reason why we, we die faster for us health-wise because it's the food that they produce, that they make, that they sell us. If we were to buy off each other food, halal and kosher food, or no pork, pure vegetables and all that, eating right, we'll live longer. Our brains will be stronger. But our attention are, is so diverted on disliking each other, distrusting each other, talking about each other. You know what I mean? That we don't even support each other. Like, anytime you see, anytime you see somebody your, your own kind, rather they on the opposite team that you support, you still pull to support both of them because that's still your people. And a lot of people can't comprehend that. When I was up the Frankfurt Chargers field when I was a young boy, my matter of fact, it was probably like 2007, 2008, supporting other team that the Frankfurt Chargers playing up Frankfurt Chargers field, right? They're like, twin, they're like, why you doing? Don't root for them. Don't root for them. Don't root for them. I said, listen, you know why I'm rooting for them? Because I remember back in the day, all we played against was white teams. So to play against other black teams, they got black teams now, I'm loving that. Because they don't see what I see. I went to prison, came home, and now you got more black teams. I went over to their huddle, went over to their coach and everything, and told all them young boys, believe in yourself. Because one day, you might be playing for the pro, the pros, whether it's football, basketball, whatever. Believe in yourself. So somebody pulled me to the side and said, I shouldn't have done that. Yes, I should have. He ain't got to be from Frankfurt, but that one individual don't even realize that he's talking to probably one of the best Frankfurt Chargers football player or football player ever to play football. And I'm giving them that type of advice because I'm older than them, because I see what can happen to them if they don't stay in them books and stay in school and stay playing sports. So that's what we don't have a lot of. A lot of you ex-drug dealers and ex-football players and ball players. a lot of y'all need to take your time and go out and talk to the youth and tell them that it's going to be okay. Stay in school. You know what I mean? Continue. Don't fall off your path because you can have a fucked up life if you do. This is what's not being told because let me tell you, this is what I see. It. This is how I see it. I see somebody who was rich and famous at one time and they walking down this road this way and down coming this the opposite way is an individual that's younger. This is the individual that's younger that's going this way. And this individual that's older that already had his turn. Instead of letting this individual walk past you, you stop him and say, yo, I got to tell you something. 
Let me tell you about my story. So you won't make the mistakes I made. Let me tell you a shortcut way to do X, Y, Z. We need more of that. You know, instead of holding on to that, harboring that shit and not letting that shit back out. Whatever you learn, you pull the regurgitated back out into the world and let someone else learn it. Recycle that talent. You know, I get tired of seeing my own people in here disrespecting each other on the internet. And that's the only way they can get some buzz, some likes, and some, some clientele from the world because they disrespecting their own kind. Why do y'all want to see that? Y'all want to see what the talk the fly is? I mean, don't get me wrong. Some of the stuff that people say is hilarious, is entertaining, is educational in its own way. But why we got to make it wisdom is serious? Why can't we just have a competition to see? Like, okay, you got that many views and buzz off grinding him up. Now let's see how he can grind you back up. Like Nick Cannon do when they be battling against each other, when they be freestyling rapping. You see how hilarious that is? And it's all fun and jokes. Not, okay, you disrespect me, I'm going to kill you now. That shit is crazy. When you do that, that only goes to show you you don't got nothing up here. You can have all this you want, all the money you want. But if you ain't got this up here, you broke for real. You broke. It's a babbling idiot. That's what it really is, I'm trying to tell you. Because any time, because what I don't like, is because the things that I learned, the things that I taught myself, once you learn and you got information, it might scare you because it's going to hurt that everything that you know up to this point is a lie. And then you see the people that know the truth and you know that they ain't teaching those who don't know. And you say to yourself, this is what they doing. This is how they stand rich. They deceiving the world. You can deceive a lot of people, man. And they the people I don't like. And they the people that's in power. They know what's going on. They know what's going on. They know stuff that you don't know that if you knew it, your whole life would be different. You'd be living different. You'd be living better. You're going to be wasting your time doing the stuff you're doing right now. A lot of y'all don't even realize y'all wasting time. What I mean by time is y'all wasting your life. Living how y'all living. Being mad the way y'all be mad. Waiting and hoping for something to happen that ain't going to happen. You know, the only way our people is going to get ahead, we got to work together. Ain't nobody going to give us anything. They didn't took everything from us. But they already know once we get back on top. Listen, there's a video that I made, right, years ago. Well, they, the video was based on many years ago, early 1900s. But I made the video last year. I think it's a short video. It might be a long video, but the thumbnail is based on, um, it's like these, our people back in the day marched for Marcus Garvey and they hold up this sign and you're gonna see them. Um, black people marching with a sign in the end, right? That's the thumbnail. But the sign say, it say 20, it say 200, it say 20,000 farms, 200,000, acres of land worth $500 million. That's what one of the signs say. So we had 20,000 farms in like 1907, around early 1900s, right? Um, 20,000 farms, 200,000 acres of land, right? Worth $500 million. That's, 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 that's amazing. So everybody came together to march to Marcus Garvey that they were strong individuals. We got to get that back. You know, whereas though we don't hate on the next man because we don't have it. We all going to have it together. And that's what that basketball was representing back in the early 80s. Team, people playing on the same team, passing the ball. Ali Oop. You remember back in the day, them basketball teams, the players used to get, get along with each other? They used to go in a van and go in different neighborhoods and them gymnasiums, and they used to make history. You know I mean? Under the whistle, the neighborhood would come. The community would come out and watch them play indoor basketball inside of a gym with a level basketball. And then in the summertime, they had the summer leagues outside, Tiffin Thompson, 
inside um what's that? Eighth or ninth and seventh and Jefferson, R. W. Brown, Cuddyham, um, Ridgeway, the Archway, um, all these recreation centers, Moreland's, which is the Hank Garrison Center, um, the wreck on 26, 27th and Thompson, or what's that, Oxford, where the wreck at, like all these centers, man, all these playgrounds that we play basketball, that we mash the game on crate courts, playing on the crate. We would take a crate, a milk crate, and it would be metal or plastic, made out of uh, play hard plastic. We would cut the bottom out, and then we would shoot the basketball. We would get put on back of a telephone pole. I got to show y'all something, too. Y'all see this picture that I showed y'all earlier in the video I made with my daughter Nana, right? Now, it's a picture that I made with my daughter Nana, right? Inside the corner, well, I told y'all my mom lives in South Philly, and I used to line all my shoes up on the wall. Y'all see them, them, uh, them Adidas, them blue Adidas? And right next to them was brown polos sneakers. The rest of them was white sneakers, but then you see the second row, it those AC gels with the green Bugs Bunny in the back of the hill, right here. See them AC gel? That's the second row. I had like four rows of sneakers and boots. This one when I was getting that Kensington money, just in my mom's house. I just lined all my sneakers up on my mom's floor. The reason why I brought that up, because I looked at a, a video that I made, I made not too low the other day. Well, not the other day, just I made it um what I made. I'm gonna give y'all some exclusive, some exclusive footage in a minute, but this video that I made um, is a five-minute video showing all this, this whole brick wall, right? I want y'all to watch that video. It's not in my. I think it's in my. Is it in my shorts? It's in my videos. It's this video right here. I want y'all to watch it. It's a five-minute video, and that's the that's the name of the video right here. Now, this is what it's really about. I'm going to show y'all. And then I'm going to let y'all hear some exclusive footage that I made the first day in front of the jail. I see it right here. This is Rap Soup right there, rapping right now. The one This is it right here. You know what I mean? That's me and Kim when I was in Kim's I got my Philly hat on, representing the Philly. Philly's playing a little bit. That's listen. I'm gonna show y'all something, right? The reason why I went to this picture is I want y'all to you know, see my daughter Nana now in this picture. Because on, on that picture that I took is um, I'm gonna show y'all real quick. Well, anyway. The picture that I'm on there with. There you go. Hold up. Well, Nana on that picture, right? But on that picture, my daughter Nana on the side, you can see the sneak. That's what made me do that. But we got to take this jail shit serious, man. Now, this is exclusive. I'm about to let y'all listen to something that's real exclusive that nobody heard before. Nobody. This one of this, the first, this is like. A rough copy of me being in front of that prison. I'm just me in front of the prison. Look. You know, so the black and brown people could, you know, like each generation is going to have to raise themselves. You know, prison is built right over top of slavery. So for any um, political leader, this is a friendly jail. You know, for people that would be you know, it's this the first people. video. Or either, you know, they phone call from the stage. Because they're so busy uh, focusing on the Somebody in prison talking to the youth. He said his words to the youth. Jail call. The reason why I let y'all hear a little bit of that is because this shit is serious to me, man. 
trying to save my people, trying to get them out of jail. I get jail calls all the time, man. From the feds a lot, from upstate a lot. Cause I got people calling me from the feds. I got people calling me from upstate. I got people calling me from the county. I got people calling me from the streets. I got people on the internet, you know, getting in touch with me. And I got to tell everybody, you know, we gotta stick together, we gotta read. We gotta understand that it's a problem that our youth and our people go through every day. And that's the black on black genocide, black on black crimes, you know, and we give Mr. Charlie a helping hand by disliking each other, by hating on each other, by sitting around figuring out how we want to destroy each other, hate on each other, man. So they trying to figure out a way how we can come together, man. How you think Mr. Charlie and them did it? They sat down and they came together and they helped each other out. Every race of people do that. They help each other out because they know if they don't help each other out, then all of them going to lose. I mean, we knocking completely off is because we so talented have free will that it hurts them that we still function. You know, we function in jail, we function in the streets, we function in the world, but they don't want us to function at all. So they try every day, 24 hours a day, to make you buy certain things. They shoot commercials at you. They shoot rap music at you. They shoot so many things at you to divert your attention from being successful, from helping your own kind out. So they promote you to go buy all that jewelry, promote you to go buy all them cars, and spend money at the club and buy bottles and spend money on materialistic things, right? Instead of saving that money to do something useful with it so your family and your people can have generational wealth, you know? But a lot of people become selfish and greedy. Selfish and greedy is two main things people possess that they show each day. And that's the reason why we can't get along. You don't, hey, but I'll sacrifice. You don't see the white race walking around with expensive sneakers on all the time, expensive jewelry on. If you seen white people wearing jewelry, you'll think something wrong with them. If you start to see them wearing jewelry a lot and wear the clothes we wear, you'll think they're imitating us. Right? Because we trying to imitate them by wearing all that shit. But they don't even wear it. You see how they dress? Right? Quite sure you see how they dress. Y'all keep thinking about that red carpet shit. And when our people throw that design and shit on, that's just, they might let you wear it for free because you promoting they, they stuff. Yeah. And them jewelers, let them rappers wear them expensive jewelry. You can, they might go on a jewelry store. Yeah, you could take that out. Just let everybody know where you got it from. They let them rock that jewelry all up until they find out that rapper career is over. Then they want the jewelry back. All them rap, all them rap videos you see, the rapper is paying for that out of his budget. The, uh, the illusion to sell records is to make you think and assume that everything that you are watching on a video is actually the rappers. That's the rapper chain. That's the rapper car. That's the rapper girl. That's the rapper squad. That's the rapper weed. You know what I mean? That's how he living whole time is just an illusion just to make you go out there and buy the shit for real slow your pockets down you trying to catch up to him he don't even got it they put him out there to make it seem like he got everything and he's cool with that he's cool with the image because a lot of people i hate to say it a lot of our people love to have the fame without the money because we've been poor for so long that we rather have the shine and the glory than the money because that's what we hustle for. So people can see that we have nice things. So if they can assume we have it when we don't really have it, that's even better than having it. Because that's what people believe. It's all about what you want people to believe. This is why people, the majority of people go out there in the streets to make money. Because they want people to believe in something that they are doing, that they that they have. So just imagine if you had anybody believing you was rich. 
that's more than actually being rich because you want people to see this shit. You want people to have in their mind that he's really got it and study you having it and don't nobody know. A lot of people can't live like that. I mean, like, for instance, Al Paul Martinez. He was very flamboyant. He couldn't live his life quiet in the Witness Protective Program and just live his life. He wanted everybody to see him. And that was his downfall. So they put him on the shelf. Yo, you gotta, you gotta, you gonna fake all this. You gonna fake your death, man, man, and you gotta sit down. You know, he know it, you know what I mean? Like, damn. I'm trying to tell you, man, like, we have to exercise the right to not say that. We gotta exercise secrecy. We have to move like water, like, like the earth, like the air. You mean you have to move in silence? You have everything. Be bold about it, but move in silence. Everybody ain't got to see what you do. Everybody ain't got to see your gun. Everybody ain't got to know you bust it. You know? Everybody ain't got to know who your enemy is. You tell everybody that's your enemy, then your enemy on point. You know what I mean? And then next time your enemy get killed, they come lock you up. You didn't tell everybody what you was going to do. We let everybody brag about your skills. The only time I've seen that happen is when a boxer is about to fight and his manager is hyping him up like, yeah, this is the champ. He can beat anybody. And he's doing them Rocky movies. You know what I mean? Or people are trying to hype up a rap battle. But when you really live in that life and you want people to know you live in that life and you tell them and you want to get locked up and they use it against you, I don't know, man. You know, that's that new wave, man. And that shit trap people in there. The internet is a trap. It can make you put yourself in a situation you don't even realize you're in a situation. That's because you got to learn how to humble yourself, man. You can't get a bag and be arrogant about it. Be all flamboyant about it, thinking you untouchable. And then one thing, I'm going to tell you something. Mr. Charlie don't like two things about us. Mr. Charlie don't like us when we brag. And Mr. Charlie don't like us when we are very, very successful. You know, they do anything. And successful, I mean by having our own people follow that individual lead. Like Michael Mac, Michael Max, Martin Luther King. You see how our brothers and sisters and ancestors was following they lead. They ain't like that. J. Edgar Hoover even told the FBI, we have to stop that because our number one enemy is the black man rising up. Yeah, so when we rise up, when, when, when they seen Meek Mills with all that love, all that support, all those followers, then they locked him up. And they did everything in their power to get him out of jail. They ain't get him out of jail because his rights was violated. They got him out of jail because they know he worth a lot of money. And he got the influence to make people follow his lead. And they can make money off that. You know? We are the key to everything. We just got to really know that. We got to look at ourselves and say, you know, I'm a king. You know? All these individuals that's out there playing basketball back in the day. Pooh Richardson, my man Doc and all of them, they really had people looking up to them. Basketball leads and football leads, baseball leads, boxing and all that karate. We looked up to all these things. Everybody was into karate. Everybody was into boxing. But they stole it from us. They found a way and found a drug that they worked over night over the clock to try to get us hooked on something, to slow us down. You got good teachers, good school teachers, good karate teachers, boxing uh, trainers, all that. I even know football coaches that was hooked on, hooked on crack, man, that a lot of us looked up to. So just imagine all these role models and teachers that we looked up to, they found a way to hook them on drugs, to slow us down. You know, look at Lynn Bias. Lynn Byers was a good athlete that was picked by the Boston Celtics. 
somebody gave him that cocaine, man. It slowed him down and killed him. The thing is, they do it for two reasons. Slow this black man down so he won't be like another Michael Jordan, right? But give him this so he can be hooked on it so he can give us all his money. Because there's a lot of people that was messing with those drugs. It's just that he, he died over it, you know? A lot of athletes was getting high, you know? A lot of politicians, a lot of movie stars. They had a studio called Studio 54 in New York. Look it up, man. They party. And the thing is, to the Hollywood world, because they say Hollywood run everything, that was just the norm to get high. You go into a manager's office or producer's office, you'll see lines of cocaines in them offices. It's, it only got notice into the spotlight like that because when people was trying to blackball somebody or try to get their position you ever notice something when somebody's being told on whether it's somebody that's a politician or a cop or a police officer or something like that is because all this information is already available and already known about they only bring it to the forefront is when they want somebody's job when it's a political fight at hand, when a judge is fighting to keep his judge seat, a politician is fighting to keep his, his, his senator, his senator being a senator, they bring out dirt on each other. Like, look at this campaign, this governor campaign. Never in the 50 years of my life have I ever seen politicians go at each other using using footage from crime scenes, black on black crime that they use in their campaign to get a vote, right? Mind you, in these communities, right? In these black communities that they putting this campaign up against, ain't none of them politicians is going to stop crime. They're not going to go in these neighborhoods and solve anything, right? But the reason why they show it because they want white America to be afraid of black Americans. So when the white man shoots and kill our kids, they're gonna remember the footage in that campaign and say, this is why we did it. We're gonna call it justifiable homicide. But at the end of the day, why would you wanna keep showing footage of people getting killed, knowing you got families that still grieving. So you want these people families that continue to suffer because you want to win a campaign? So you say to yourself, why would you vote for somebody that would use that type of tactics in a campaign? Anytime you see a campaign and you see an individual talking bad about the person he's going against, then you don't vote for that person because that person pulls the only campaign about the good things that they do. In the Bible, you know, the Bible, is so, the majority of the politicians are Christians, right? And the Bible would say no backbiting and all that, right? It's one of the commandments, right? So why are they backbiting each other? Why are they talking about each other? Why are they stupid that low to show two individual young boys standing over top of somebody shooting a bottle, I mean, shooting a body up with bullets? All you see is gun smoke, gun smoke, and somebody and the person shaking. You know that's a body. And you got to see that over and over again every fucking day on TV. Like, that's crazy. You know? This shit is a joke, man. All this shit is a joke, man. When you ever seen somebody do something for our people, yo? I'm going to wait. We didn't fought years for this country and every war. You know what I mean? We didn't wipe the asses. Scrub fucking um steps. Clean up after these people. Clean up after their children for centuries, and they don't give a shit. That's why I look at that shit as a joke, man. Only time I ever voted in my life was for Obama. You know what I mean? I ain't wasting my motherfucking time. Why don't waste my time for y'all? Keep thinking that shit means something. That shit is rigged. You think they're gonna let someone else run their country? Is you crazy? 
If they go to other third world countries with they jackals and kill those people and drive them people out, uh, drive their whole mineral resources out and take over their countries, you think they're going to let you vote for who y'all want to vote for and let that be that? Come on, man. They can kill their own president. You know what I mean? They killed Kennedy. Yeah, come on, man. Y'all about to wake the fuck up, man. Wake up, man. You know? That shit ain't number the stage. You know what I mean? Print up all that paper, all those campaign papers and advertisement. They sent them to your door. All that access paper, all that wasted paper. Well, politicians face on they wasting all that money for that bullshit. The fuck out. I'ma wait and see what they do for this country, for this city after this election on November 8th. November 8th. You know, and they keep talking about abortion. Fuck out. Y'all only been talking about abortion. I remember 20, two, the year 2000, they had a Republican re convention down center city. I had my black metallic Lexus. I'm coming past 15th and Market, and it scared the shit out of me. I forgot who I had in the car with me, but right on the side of City Hall, on, on Chestnut, on Walnut Street side of City Hall, I was driving around, right? And all you see these people out there, they picket signs on um, demonstrations of babies that just came out the womb, and they was really angry. And I could feel all that bad energy, man. That shit. It, this when the Rock uh, came down here to wrestle. Let me came down here and spoke at the convention, and it just messed me up that they make a they make a big issue out of abortion, knowing damn well they can stop it if they want, or they can legalize it if they want. But at the end of the day, a woman should have the last say so what she want to do with her body, you know? And I just hate how they put this abortion shit always in their politics and they campaign and they never do shit about it, you know? If a woman get raped, she should be able to do what she want to do with her body. Point blank, period, you know? And the world is not overpopulated because you can fit anybody in Texas. All 8 billion people. Just that people want to live in certain places, that's probably too many people to live at. And another thing, 75, y'all look at the Eagles, y'all look at the, the Phillies game, right? And y'all see how many people be at the Phillies World Series? That was like, what, 40,000 people or 30,000 people, something like that, 45,000 people. Well, 75,000 African-American women been missing since 2016. 75,000 African American women been missing since 2016. And ain't nobody speaking on it. And that's like two of those football world stadium stadium filled up. That's all the women that's missing that's of my people. Why they ain't talking about that in their campaigns? You know? Thank y'all. Use your head on this, man. You know? What's going on? Be water, my friend. Exactly. Be water, my friend. Stay humble. Exactly. Gotta be water. Like Bruce Lee said, be water, my friend. <laughs> hey, listen, man. It's only right. Listen, I'm just here to make you think, man. That's it. Nothing more, nothing left. I'm not doing this for likes. I'm not doing this for money. You know, a lot of y'all need to start donating. I know it's hard out here. I know it's hard out here. But a lot of y'all need to start donating to the cash app for these kids. It's getting cold out here now. I'm trying to get this these winter hoodies. I'm trying to get these winter ski jackets. You know what I mean? So if y'all can donate to the channel, that's dollar sign H-A-K-1-1-1. Dollar sign H-A-K-1-1-1. Dollar sign H-A-K-1-1-1 is the cash app. Make sure y'all get with me. Seriously, so I can help these kids out, man. You know? I know kids, I know, I know when you're a kid, you mad that you're poor. You mad that you can't afford a coat. You mad. I remember this one boy told me when he was a kid, he couldn't afford Michael Jordans. So he used to be in school. He used to just draw the Michael Jordan sneakers. Do you see the impact of sneaker? A sneaker. See? See, I got him on the wire. A sneaker can have that much impact on a person's thinking. The, mani the manipulation game is real, man. Our people are so crazy over sneakers, fashion, 
cell phones. So just imagine the third world countries. They kill you about a pair of sneakers and about a um a cell phone. I remember at one time in the was it LA or Chicago, they was killing people with Michael Jordan sneakers, man. I mean, people weren't getting killed in Philly over with Michael Jordan sneakers. Now, my homie, Vibrant, my homie, my homie, Mike, from, he from 28th and Diamond, but he wound up moving down Blumber later on in life, right? But he grew up on 28th and Diamond on Eddie Street with me. That was our best friend before him and everything. He the first one that ever got locked up over a pair of sneakers in the sneaker store. He's a 52nd in market at the sneaker store buying some sneaks. And somebody tried to rob him. So he got locked up on a juvenile body. And he just came home a few years back because they stopped, you know, giving juveniles life. So he was a lifer. He did all that time because he went to go buy some sneaks. You know, he might have been doing this thing in the streets, get money. But he went out 52nd and market because, you know, when you go out certain neighborhoods, out to the mall, instead of your avenue, Buying sneaks, you're gonna get sneaks that ain't nobody got different pair of sneaks, or it might be certain neighborhoods that only sell certain sneakers. You understand what I'm saying? You know what I mean. Like when a sneaker come out, and you gotta go find that sneaker for your kid for Easter or for Christmas or for the birthday or for something. You know what I'm saying? If you're a parent, you know what I'm talking about. You gotta go all over the world to find your kid some sneaks. Or something like that, you know. We done made all these name brand companies filthy rich. We did because we more fat. We 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 wear more fashion than anybody. Now, don't get me wrong. You might see wealthy people wearing Adidas and fashion and all that, but a lot of them people, like athletes and all that, a lot of them that's white. A lot of that stuff was given to them for free. We pay for everything. You feel what I'm saying? And believe it or not, Mr. Charlie and them get credit. And they don't really have to pay for this shit. We got to pay for it. They make us pay for it. We pay more on the interest rates and everything. You buy a car compared to somebody else buying a car that they don't have this. They're going to get it for cheaper. They're going to get a job better. They're going to live in conditions. Like I told y'all, those houses in the suburbs only cost them a hundred dollars to move in. And the reason why I know this because I did research and I did study. And if you did research and brainstorm and study like me, you'll know the truth about Mr. Charlie the ways you know the truth about yourself, you know the truth, and then you'll live life different, then you will feel different, you know, because what they do every day, they work hard 24 hours a day to manipulate the minds to make it seem like they more superior than us. They make it seem like they better than us. That's why they like to show these slave movies and all that. No, why you don't never show white people coming over here being slaves? And they came over here, they couldn't afford that voyage trip. They couldn't afford that boat trip. So they said, okay, you can't afford that boat trip. When you get over to America, when you get in Philadelphia, you got to work for free for me for four to eight years, you my slave. And white people did that. And then after that, they became citizens. This is something I know. Do the research. Google it. You know what I mean? We came over here looking for job and opportunity. We didn't come over here looking for no handouts. We wanted to work. We had the skills. Once they abolished slavery and that nut shit they was doing, we had the skills. We was the only ones that knew how to work because we were the only ones working. That's like a coach that don't know how to play basketball, but you know how to coach. But now... They're saying now the um the players can be coaches. You know what I mean? And then now they don't want to be coached no more because they can coach themselves. And that's the same thing that happened with slavery. They freed us and they said, okay, now you can work for yourself. And they got mad. How dare them can be able to afford nice clothes, nice hats? See, back in the day, if you had a hat and a pair of shoes and a coat, that was considered like your wealth because everybody couldn't afford sneakers a hat and a coat back then and we take a lot of shit for granted man a lot 
That's why I give a lot of stuff away. Cause I want to. I don't want to have a thousand pairs of sneakers. I want to have a thousand coats, a thousand hats. When I know somebody else don't got nothing, and a lot of y'all got all of that shit, and y'all don't even need half the shit that y'all got, and a lot of stuff y'all not even gonna wear. Like the one basketball player, somebody, some athlete, or some um um rapper got all these expensive sneaks, and that's part of his his wealth. I said, damn, I had a lot of sneaks. And I never looked at my sneaks as being wealth. You know, anything I got is just, that's expensive. I'm, I give it away. I might keep a little bit of it because I at least want to have some memory. But I don't treasure anything because I know that one day I'm not going to be here. See, when you on earth and you living your life, your, your, your body is like a Halloween costume, right? You know how you got to step into your Halloween costume to put the costume on? You stepping into that Halloween costume is like your soul stepping into your body. Because it's really your soul. This right here ain't nothing but a costume. Some costumes look better than other costumes. That's it. And that's the facts. You know, don't let it go over your head. You know, we are all, we, we are all costumes. You know what I mean? You step out your costume, your soul. You know, and they say when you die, if you mean in this world, in the next world, your soul will continue to be mean. You know, so all y'all with them bad personalities, you need to work on your personalities, man. If you don't want to be in the next world unhappy, I'm glad I'm always the majority, majority of the time happy in a good mood because I love my life, I love myself, and a lot of people don't love themselves. Because they blame they self because they father wasn't around. Or because they mom didn't treat them that good, didn't hug them that much, and hug the other kid much. You gotta understand something. When a mother might favor the younger kid the most, because it's the last kid, that's the last one they gotta take care of. You feel what I'm saying? And they know that you are more responsible. A lot of y'all don't look at it that way. Y'all want that attention and all that. Grow the fuck up. Grow up. And stop mentally beating yourself the fuck up like that. Because by you beating yourself up mentally like that, you're making yourself go crazy. And that's weakness. All right, shit didn't work out for you when you was a kid. All right, you wasn't rich. Your mom beat you or whatever. Fuck all that. You older now. You got things that you never had before. Live your life and be grateful. Instead of living in the past like you eight years old. I ain't have a lot of shit. But you can't tell. Hey, listen, my man, I don't know what's going on, but you can't come on the channel trying to uh, promote your own channel off my channel. I don't think so. You know, some people come on here and tell me, I don't know what they're trying to do. You can't get, I mean, y'all see how I get on here. I make a 30-second video, not even that long, get 5,000 views. Let me show you a, view, a video that I made, and this video only like seven seconds long. Look. Cause you don't like the, cause you don't like the way another nigga talk. I got five thousand views today off an eight second video. Well, I know what to do. I know how to get views, man. I ain't gotta make a, a video for five hours. Then you gotta know what to say and when to say it. You gotta know what this. You gotta know what to say and when to say it. Yeah, I can only go up. I'm almost at two million views too. Freedom men, you know what I mean? Say no to drugs. Read those books. Read, read, read. Learn a little bit about everything. Learn a little bit about everything. Turn a problem and turn it into an opportunity. A problem is only an opportunity in disguise. A problem is only an opportunity in disguise. I'm schooling y'all right now. You hear me? This right here, woohoo! This thing right here, dangerous. You know what I mean? I know how to use it. I know how to mold myself into being, being more intelligent than I was yesterday. That's why I can get in here and get on here, you know what I'm saying, and talk to a billionaire without being scared 
because he got money. That money don't mean shit to me. Because at the end of the day, he ain't going to live forever. I might outlive a billionaire. Then what? That's how you got to look at Jay-Z. A lot of y'all look up to Jay-Z because he got money and all that. But a lot of y'all going to outlive him. Then he ain't going to have nothing. He's going to be a memory. So stop letting a colorful name and a person's situation make you feel that you got to chase him and look up to him. No, look up to yourself. You know? Believe that. At the end of the day, it's about your health and your family, not money. Your family and your health. Because when you're in the hospital sick and fucked up and you land in that hospital bed looking at that ceiling and hearing that machine go off, the only thing you're going to want is to be healthy. Believe that. You understand me? You understand me? Yeah, though. Hockey Raw, live and direct. I'm going to end that so I go back to the party so I can watch this Phillies game. This game six. Come on, Phillies. You know what I mean? The bat's been cold for a couple of days. But if this is written the way it's supposed to be written, game seven. Game seven? I'm on Phillies. Take this to game seven, baby. Yeah, we ain't got nothing to lose and a lot to gain. Because ain't nobody thought we was going to be where we at right now. That's why I take my hat off and them goddamn eagles. Fully trenches, fully trenches, fully trenches. What's up, cuzzo? What's up, jeans? Yeah, what's up, cousin? Yeah, I'm about to get off this thing, but I got a little respect for you, you know. And I told Sabrina I talked to you. Yeah. I said, I told her, I told him I talked to you. Yeah, man. I'm just on here doing my thing, man. And it's freestyle, man. Anything I do is freestyle. Anytime you go down to the prison house, down the, I went down to the prison house, y'all, and did an interview with Darnell Jackson. This in front of the federal courthouse. I'm in front of the federal prison that he's in on Seventh and Arch. He called, he wanted to do the interview. You know what I mean, because he wants the world to know his innocence and all that. See, the thing is, when you locked up like that, you gotta fight not only with a lawyer, you gotta fight through social media and everything, man. Because social media is the world. Philly trenches, Philly trenches, Philly trenches. Peace. <laughs>